We are now going live YouTube. This is KGUA in Wallala 88.3 FM. I'm your host today, Leanne Lindsay. And before we get in with our first guest, we are going to tell you a couple of announcements. Thursday today, the 22nd at the Wallala Community Pharmacy from 1 to 4 p.m., there is a drive-through prescription take back and they are taking expired or unused prescriptions. And that's 1 to 4 p.m. right here in Wallala, right next to the grocery, Wallala grocery store. Today, it is virtual third Thursday poetry and jazz. And this month's reading will feature San Francisco poet Tongo Ison Martin with open mic to follow. And that's 7 p.m. on Zoom. For more information, you can contact Blake at snakely1.com. And that's snakely with a Y. The Art in the Schools online exhibit continues, and that is called Young Creative Minds, featuring the artwork produced in local schools, curated by Sigrid Hillscan, and that exhibit runs through June 10th, and that is available online at wallalaarts.org, and that's G-U-A-L-A-L-A-Arts.org online. Tomorrow it is Pay and Take Books and Clothing, and that will be from 9 to 12 p.m., 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Wallala Community Center right here in Wallala. Up in Mendocino, the Kelly House is reopening, and they are also uh, going to be offering walking tours again of the Mendocino Historical District, and those tours are led by Kelly House docents. And you can uh, contact them at 707-937-5791 for hours uh, that it looks like Saturdays and Sundays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And also you can check them out at kellyhousemuseum.org. And there are a couple of things happening in the art world. Now getting into our show uh, tomorrow or Saturday, excuse me, this is Thursday, Saturday, April the uh, 20, let's see, it's gonna be the 24th. And that is going to be a continuation of the art uh, that is being displayed at both Linden Design Gallery on Annapolis Road in the Sea Ranch and also at Wallala Arts in the Burnett Gallery. And that is called Combining Forces. Uh, both a camera and a brush are used in this. And it combines the work of photographer Arun Patel and also painter Keith Wilson. And we have them on Zoom right now. And it looks like we are, do have audio for Keith, th thank goodness. And let me just tell you real quick, before I introduce them, the title Combining Forces not only references two artists working together, it more importantly documents the power and energy or the chi present in the natural world that flows through the merged images and informs the resultant product. And through the years of intense study of Japanese aesthetics and Chinese painting traditions, coupled with extensive travel in rural Japan and China, it gave a framework for experiencing the North Coast shore, meadows and forest zones that we all love. So welcome to the show this morning, both to Keith Wilson the, and also Arun Patel. Good morning. Thank you. Good and it's great to have you both on the show. And I want you to uh, first, Keith, why don't you start, give us a little background about yourself and then Arun, I'd love to have you do the same. Um, <clears throat> I actually studied architecture at, at, at Berkeley and um, uh, but in practice for 20 years, but uh, uh, the whole time I was also a painter. And um, <clears throat> so I, I, I painted, uh, imaginary architectural buildings, things that I, I could never get built. So it was kind of a fun way to uh, explore, you know, creativity. The um, uh, eventually, uh, I, you know, we we came up to Sea Ranch um, and got a little cabin, and then uh, gradually, um, you know, changed and 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 got a, a more of a full time house. And I have my studio here. Um, we've had a lot of uh, connection with Sea Ranch over the years. Um, Charles Moore was my um, thesis advisor, and he uh, gave uh, my wife and I uh, uh, his uh, condo for two weeks while we were um, 
you know, for, for a wedding present. So that was our honeymoon up here. So was, you know, we've, we've always had a, a great connection here. Um, in traveling uh, through my architectural work, I, I traveled in, a lot in Japan and China and discovered a, a, a very important um, aesthetic connection that, that you know, stayed with me all my life. Um, when I stopped doing architecture 20 years ago, the, um, I painted the landscapes up here with watercolor and sumi ink. Um, this was, uh, you know, a very fertile, uh, very, very exciting and creative time for me. And it's been very, uh, interesting to take these paintings that were done sometimes 20 years ago and re, uh, give them a new life, uh, uh, you know, with Arun's, uh, photographs, uh, in this, uh, collaborative work. So, uh, that, that's been, um, you know, the start of this whole thing. And it's, it's been a major element to revisit these um, uh, paintings that I really love from, from, from the past and combine them and, and make something different. Well, I first want to ask what that extra noise is. If it's coming from one of your computers, I keep hearing a ding. Um, maybe I'm dinging you... today. Uh, <laughs> you, may, no, you may have I, Facebook I, Messenger I think it, up or I something. Think it's mail coming in. I, I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, if we did the... I'll try All right, to... but... I just want to say a couple of things there too. First, I want to let everyone know that uh, you can see some of these images that I am now sharing on the screen with Zoom and YouTube. You can go to our KGUA channel and see us live as well as hear us on 88.3 FM. And Keith, uh, I we just recently interviewed Michael Baron White who wow. also studied their architecture in Berkeley and uh, was drawn to the Sea Ranch and has blended style of architecture with green home design. And we're going to have him back on the show again, talking about more affordable green architecture. So it's interesting. You guys have that connection. Yes. And um, then also, Arun, why don't you give us a little background on yourself? Well, I came to... Um to the artistic side of my life a little later, about seven or eight years ago, I became more seriously interested in black and white photography. And uh, just like uh, Keith uh, did some travels in Asia, which, which informed uh, my ideas about what I found beautiful, um, specifically uh, Chinese and Japanese landscape uh, paintings and trying to emulate how uh, some of the principles that are used to make those beautiful paintings that you see in museums. Uh, this includes things like uh, use of negative space and uh, using clouds and, and mist to create layers and depth. And uh, so I try to make uh, sort of minimal, um, minimal looking photographs, but trying to employ some of these principles that uh, that I've learned by uh, studying uh, Chinese and Japanese landscape art. Um, we, um, Carol, my wife and I came to Sea Ranch. We were introduced um, many years ago when our children were young, but uh, we, we live in Sacramento at the time. And um, it, we, we came here on holiday with a friend and it was, a, it was one of those very windy, cold days uh, and then we were cooped up in the house um, and we said, wow, this, this place is not for us. But, uh, but it drew us back uh, later when the kids were gone. And uh, luckily we came in, in better weather and fell in love with Sea Ranch. Uh, and now we have a home here. And as I'm retired, I spend uh, more than 50% of my time exploring the coast and uh, trying to make some meaningful photographs. I know what you both mean about being drawn to this locale and to Sea Ranch. I was in the tech industry for about 18 years and would drive up the coast this way to some property that my family has up by Willits and I'd take the coastal route and always wanted to come here. I'd vacation here as well over the years and do also, also offsite meetings here. But I want to just reflect on what you were saying about what has compelled you, that negative space, your uh, study of Japanese art and Chinese art. You can, if, if you are on YouTube, you can see some of the artwork. I wanna ask you guys if you can see on your screens 
all three images that I have on the left here, starting with a tree at the top, another tree with a mountain in the background, and it looks like someone standing on a horizon. Do you see all three of those? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are amazing images. They're so moving and so captivating. Now, it was a combination of using both the digital imaging and the paint artwork, correct? Is that correct? Yes. And you, how long does it take you to do one of these? Well, it's, it, it's, uh, it's not like there's a recipe. <laughs> there, 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 there's, uh, you know, when we first started out, Arun would give me a photograph and his, you know, he'd print up a nice photograph for me. And then the, the, the original concept was that then I would paint with Sumi ink or watercolor, you know, over the photograph. And, um, uh, you know, that's where we would generate the, the collaboration. Um, I, I kept having hesitation because his photographs were so meaningful to me. And so, so uh, uh, you know, I felt I was violating them by, by even touching them with, uh, with a brush. So uh, I, we ended up... Uh, uh, bringing them together, uh, you know, on the computer uh, in, in, in Photoshop in a very um, kind of painterly way. Uh, you know, Photoshop can make anything look look real, but that wasn't our point. Uh, you know, it, it's used a lot for fantasy things. And uh, we wanted it to, uh, we wanted the, the, the photographs to be enriched and, and be augmented with the, uh, um, uh, paintings, but and integrated with them, but not as a way of um, uh, kind of destroying each other. Uh, you know, a, a competitive thing where you know I'm I'm working over his or he's working over my uh, artwork. So in, in this way, we were able to merge the um, the images, and it took a long time. Uh, you know, I he'd, he'd send me a photograph, uh, and this was during COVID, so we couldn't really meet, so we had to do everything over the internet. Um, and, uh, so he would, he would give me the photograph and then I would, uh, think about it for a while. And then I would bring in images, uh, from my watercolors. And I've, I've got to say the watercolors were good because a good choice because they're, they're translucent, transparent. Um, uh, whereas an oil painting, uh, photograph would be much denser, uh, uh, uh you know, uh, images. So anyway, it was there was a lot of uh, give and take, and and we had a lot of discussion. So each image took a long time to build, and um, then we go to print it, and it would look good. And then we go to print it bigger, and it wouldn't look good. So then we'd have to rebuild the image, um, you know, using higher resolution images and um, you know more scans. Uh, so some of our images uh, became like uh, two gigabytes in uh, file size. So they were like enormous, and. Um, so anyway, it was a long learning practice, but but it was a very 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 productive dialogue because um, uh, you know I would try to bring out the images that made the painting um, kind of inform the painting, and then the and then um, uh, Arun and I would have long discussions about whether that's you know going through our you know make, going through, uh, directed towards our, our 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 aesthetic purpose. So anyway, it was, uh, Arun has a lot to say on this too. So it took a long time, but um, it was, it was very uh, rich time and, and very uh, sharing time uh, between us. It was during this past year of the pandemic, yes. correct? That you did a lot of this work and what a beautiful combination of forces. It's like the combined voices that bring out a beautiful harmony in, in what you see here. It's almost like a unique voice and, uh, and you are showing these, as I want to remind those who may just be tuning in, uh, you are listening to both Keith Wilson, who is a painter and photographer, Arun Patel. I'm Leanne Lindsay, and this is Peggy's Place on KGUA in Wallala 88.3 FM. We are streaming around the world at kgua.org, and we are live on YouTube today. And the exhibits are at two different galleries. One is in the Sea Ranch and that's Linden Design Gallery. And they're open from 11 to four uh, by appointment as well. If you email lindendesign at me.com, that's L-Y-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-D-E-N-
N-D-O-N design at me.com. And that's Saturdays through May 1st that they are open 11 to 4. And then at the Willow Arts Center, they are open daily from 11 to 4 p.m., 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's in the Burnett Gallery. They have uh, uh, also a wall that is exhibiting this process of how you guys have brought these pieces together. And Arun, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, uh, if I may back up just a bit, uh, the idea of collaboration in visual arts is quite unusual and unique. Um, uh, in, in collaboration in music, for example, is not only normal, but almost expected. Um, but in the visual arts, it's very unusual to have uh, uh, two artists working together in this way. So um, the idea of this collaboration began in my mind when I was not able to make the kind of print I was happy with, and I had to ask somebody else to make a print for me. I like to do my own printing. But I, I, I was intrigued by uh, uh, something called a direct carbon transfer print. And a gentleman in Calvin Greer in Valencia, Spain, was able to make me the kind of print that I was envisioning. And this made me think that maybe collaboration in visual arts could result in something where one plus one could equal you know, more than two. And uh, I followed that up. Uh, with uh, a, a very well-known calligrapher, uh, Kathy Shao, who uh, took some of my Chinese uh, landscape photographs and uh, did some calligraphy on the photograph. And I felt that that really enhanced uh, the photograph and brought, it, brought the piece of art to another level. And so I had uh, had this idea of collaborating with a painter for a while and and uh, Keith, uh, Keith and I met uh, uh, and we began to discuss this idea and, and I'm so delighted that the idea appealed to him. At the time, as Keith mentioned, we didn't envision uh, drifting into Photoshop, um, but uh, uh, I, uh, it's, uh, it, it, that's what happened. It's very it's kind of an organic uh, process that evolved. And I'm delighted that it has. Uh, to be honest, the collaboration has been very easy, very uh, um, natural. There hasn't, um, we haven't been uh, fighting with one another about the meaning of uh, peace. And uh, it just seems to flow quite naturally, like a good conversation between two old friends. And I'd like to think that uh, this, these unique, very unique pieces where two people have, you know, worked together to create one piece of visual art. Uh, I'd like to think that we have uh, managed to make one plus one equal more than two. Beautifully said. And it is taking the combined talents. And once you have that mutual respect, as well as that flow that occurs, and then from that, it's like a whole individual piece uh, emerges from that collaboration. And that's what it's called. It's a digital co collaboration, but it's called Combining Forces, uh, the exhibit. Now, since it's at two different galleries, Keith or Arun, either one, uh, you obviously have different pieces at each different gallery, correct? Well, we, we, you know, in, uh, in uh, September, I think we put together a proposal for the Guadalajara Art Center and it got accepted. And then, um, uh, you know, we, we, you know, it's a beautiful space at Burnett Gallery. And so, you know, we, we wanted to fill it with, uh, not fill it, we wanted to, 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 to make the, the proper amount of work for the space. So we made the large pieces for the end wall and, and then, um, you know, it's a, that was about uh, seven, seven pieces. And then um, we just kept having all these great ideas. So then we talked to um, uh, Maynard and Lou uh, at the Linden Design um, Gallery. And- um, Which uh, you can see exhibited here, I believe in the two bottom photographs, correct? Underneath our- Right. Right. And, and, 
And so we had, we had this, you know, all these other great uh, images. And, and so then, then uh, Maynard wanted to show those in conjunction with the, uh, you know, during the time period of the, of the uh, Guadalajara Art, Art Center show. So it's, it's been a, uh, uh, you know, organic process as Arun said, and um, uh, we've, we've received, I mean, we've just received a lot of very good positive uh, response to the work. Uh, it reminds people of things and, but, but it's not graphic in that it's, it's not a simple image. There's a lot of depth in all the, all the work. Um, so especially uh, that one I'm looking at at the bottom with the person that's standing on the horizon. Uh, that, that's that, it, what's that? If we have a, if we have one minute, I don't know if we're running out of time, but it was very, we, in, few, huh? we have a few, a few minutes. Go ahead. It was very interesting, and and uh, actually in the Guala Art Center show, um, we did a series of uh, eleven panels that tried to explain, you know, in a light way, uh, 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 you know, the viewing notes are, are are very important because it shows what what pieces were brought together to make the the collaboration, um, and um, uh, the 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 monk, um, I don't know if you can see this, but the monk um, which Arun took. Uh, uh, yes. along the shore, he was just driving through uh, Jenner and saw this, you know, white figure uh, looking out to sea. So he took that picture and then that combined with a, um, a very abstract uh, watercolor of, uh, of mine. Um, and, and then um, we brought in a, uh, uh, actually it was a photograph from my studio a long time ago where there was a, a Chinese uh, terracotta, statue in the window and the sun came through and 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 gave a reflection onto the um the the canvas uh and um i i brought the um nice the monk here oh that's beautiful <laughs> the way that it combines together it's it's like you are seeing this larger image of the same one standing there on the bluff but it also has some metaphysical uh uh you know, readings that you could do, you know, the, the warrior, the, 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 the terracotta warrior was a man of war and the, the monk is a man of peace. And um, the, the two kind of reflecting a lot of times the, the, the terracotta warrior, warrior could become a, a monk later on uh, in, in life. Uh, and so the, the, there's a lot of past and present and a lot of uh, overshadowing and, and you could probably have some psychological uh, interpretations too, but it, all that comes together, you know, when Arun and I were working so that, you know, that, that, that it's more, it's not just a pretty picture. We, we try to put a lot of meaning and a lot of, um, you know, our experience in seeing things and thinking about things and relating to society and, and humanity uh, and, and with a very positive way. And we, we try to bring that together uh, in these works, even if it's just a tree looking at a, uh, a rock, you know, <laughs> it, it, it's important because everything communicates in the world, especially on Earth Day, we should be communicating more. Thank you. Well said. And Arun, any last thoughts? Well, uh, I'd like to uh, just emphasize that, um, you know, the, the photograph of the monk itself is, is, a, is beautiful uh, and very calming, but I think the combined work adds a lot of meaning and and the uh, amount of interpretation that's possible is, is, is limitless, which is what makes the piece of art interesting. Uh, uh, and uh, I think if someone were to spend time looking at each of these combined images, I think uh, each person might interpret them differently. Um, the simple image of the fence and sea ranch can be seen as a skyline uh, in a city and that dichotomy is very interesting. So uh, if, if, if I encourage people to visit the two galleries and to spend a little time to see what these images mean to them and to turn to their, to their friend or partner, whoever's with them and say, hey, what, what, what did, meaning did that carry for you? And I think that would be an interesting exercise for, for the viewer. Those are always fun conversations to have when you visit museums and galleries. And the last thing I wanted to mention too, to our YouTube viewers out there, and uh, I'll describe some of this to our listeners, but also at Linden Design Gallery there in the Sea Ranch on Annapolis Road, you can see some of uh, Keith's other paintings. Oh, those are being exhibited 
during the show? Keith? Yes. Okay, so some of your beautiful, colorful paintings that fit so well in the Linden Design Gallery theme. Uh, it's just beautiful. And all of it, I mean, it's just very captivating. And I encourage all of our listeners and viewers, if you get a chance, uh, see all of the works at both Linden Design Gallery, which is open Saturdays through May 1st with this exhibit, 11 to 4 on Annapolis Road in the Sea Ranch, as well as the Wallala Arts Center right here in, in town in the Redwoods. And they are open daily, 11 to 4 p.m. And that is uh, Arun Patel and Keith Wilson. Thank you very much, both of you, for joining us today. It was a pleasure to have you on Peggy's Place here at KGUA in Wallala. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Very nice. You're welcome. All right. Take care and have a wonderful exhibit. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. And now we're going to transition to the second half of Peggy's Place in just a moment. And we are going to uh, have uh, just a little bit of music while I make this transition. Okay, and we are back with Peggy's Place, and I now uh, have with us David Bricks, and I was looking for Deborah Threckle. Uh, she was there a few minutes ago, but I don't see her now, and I'm going to ask if, uh, if Keith could go ahead and sign on off, and let's see if I can... Put him there. I'm working with Zoom and YouTube at the same time and radio. This is KGUA in Wallala 88.3 FM. We are streaming around the world at KGUA.org. We've got a great app called the Air Pocket, KGUA Air Pocket app, where you can take it with you everywhere you go. And we are on many radio apps as well. I'm Leanne Lindsay, your host today. And this is again, Peggy's place. We are waiting for Deborah to come, but until then, uh, David, I just want to say hello to you and welcome to the show. And let's see if we can get your mic on. Whoops, I just, I, just as you unmuted, <laughs> I muted you. That's what happens in the Zoom world. No problem. I've got it. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning, and, and again, I really am glad to have you guys on the show today. This is, your exhibit is opening up May 1st and from noon to 5 p.m. at the Coast Highway Art Collective in Point Arena, and that uh, runs through the whole month of May. The regular hours for the Coast Highway Art Collective are Thursday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and that's at 284 Main Street. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Ling Yin Jones for putting all this together. And uh, why don't you, while we're waiting for Deborah, give us a little background on yourself and the exhibit, your part of the exhibit. And I have, I'm now going to, while you're talking, I'm still sharing screen. I'm going to remove some of their uh, artwork from the previous show and I'm going to put some of yours up. Okay, great. Um, so, you know, my background, uh, was started in design. I uh, was trained, went to school for industrial design, which I did for a while um, until there was a, well, basically, uh, in addition to industrial design, I minored in photography. Um, I've done some uh, tabletop product photography um, as well as um, architectural photography. Um, and over the years, I sort of started to do digital imaging. So <clears throat> the uh, Photoshop, uh, photo retouching, compositing, illustration, that sort of thing. So I have that background. Um, as uh, time went on, I migrated into a different career. Uh, I got married and uh, wanted to be able to make sure that uh, I was financially um, uh, stable. So I went into uh, ultrasound as a career, uh, medical ultrasound. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm actually taking a little break yeah, from work. Scrubs. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my scrubs. 
uh, they were gracious enough to allow me the time to join you. And, um, but um, one of the things that um, moving into the ultrasound career allowed me to do, it, it um, allowed me to have the money to travel and get out and see some of the, the things that I've always wanted to get out and to, and um, uh, to be able to um, start to practice uh, my art of um, landscape and nightscape photography. So um, that's been really wonderful. And um, it's kind of uh, a, a culmination of so much of who I am and, and um, uh, what, I'm, what I like to see and do in terms of um, being out in nature and enjoying yeah, all why the, don't you get on the Zoom call things again. that uh, are out there to see. So. Well, I saw you there. I just hadn't finished you yet. Okay, hang on one second. Hang on, I've got to talk. Okay, David, uh, thank you very much for that introduction. And why don't you tell us while I'm talking with Deborah Threckle here on the phone to get her back on Zoom, tell us about this uh, Crater Lake photograph that you did. It's just absolutely stunning. And this is up in Southern Oregon at yeah. Crater Lake National Park. Yeah, that um, is the probably the one of the okay. latest uh, pieces that I had a chance to do before um, all the COVID restrictions went into place. I uh, took a trip up through Oregon and Crater Lake is oh, amazing. I saw uh, you there before. So I took about um, about three o'clock in the morning. I went out and I was hoping to get a shot over the lake, but um, the roads were closed on the side of the lake that I would need to be on. Um, I was driving around looking for a, a, a good foreground location and there was okay. actually a group of You're people coming in. Uh, on a hillside okay. taking pictures Parking of the lake. I, I went up and turned around away from the lake and there was the Milky Way which was the main subject and so I set my camera up and started to shoot this image and one of the participants there was a small workshop that was shooting pictures of the moon over the lake and they came over and said what do you what are you taking a picture of? Because I was pointed in the exact opposite direction. And I said, the Milky Way. And I went, oh, <laughs> and he set up his camera next to me and started shooting. You know, it's an interesting shot for me. The moon had just risen, which gives the foreground lighting. And that's, that's a technique that I've started to explore to be able to have some, you know, so that the foregrounds aren't in shadow. And um, there's so much to this picture that, you know, we can't necessarily see with the naked eye, but it's, it's there, it's there uh, and the camera can capture it and, and we can kind of um, bring out that detail. Um, so that's, you can see green uh, air glow in the uh, lower part of the sky. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, uh, the shot just turned out really nice. I was very pleased with it, so. It's really stunning. It, it is really stunning and Deborah, Finally, I think has joined us. I can hear you a little bit in the background. Yeah, although there's your image be a problem is really with the fuzzy. Video. What's yeah, that? I said there seems to be a problem with the video, and I don't know. But it's okay. Uh, we'll yeah. uh, we'll make <laughs> it's sure actually quite artistic. <laughs> it's it quite mystery. Artistic. Yeah. Hey, David. Nice to finally meet you. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Excellent. Nice. Well, we just. Had a little bit of a Zoom issue, but she's here now. Welcome to the show, Deborah. And I just love your abalone yes, jewelry. Sir. You're the you're the abalone queen jewelry. I know. You know, it just kind of evolved. I I moved up here and I'd been making jewelry for a while, but then um, I I just started collecting jewelry and I made pieces for myself and. Pretty soon everyone up here wanted a necklace and I had a party and during this party I sold all of my inventory and I realized I had something. It Sometimes in life doors are closed and you can't get them to open. This one the door flung wide open and I it's been a great journey ever since. So 20 years of doing this you moved to Walala 10 years ago. What compelled you to move here? Well, my family has been coming here since the 1940s. My grandparents used to come and hang out at the hotel and go to the Garcia River and up to the hot springs. And there were a lot of pictures where I always wondered, where are they? Because they were having like the best time. My grandmother, who's a teetotaler, is like 
drinking wine out of a boda. They're dressed up out in the middle of the redwoods. And when I moved here, I went to a family reunion and flipped over the photos and it said Gualala on the back of all of them. I, my dad used to live here too. When I was in high school, my dad um, lived here and my stepmother was in charge of the phone line to Hawaii. Um, and so they lived here for several years and my brothers and sister went to, high, to grade school here. So I've always had this connection and I think we just, my husband and I just started coming here more and more. It was like every opportunity we had um, to get away, we were like, let's go to Gualala. And we realized we could make this our home. Well, the colors from the abalone jewelry that we are showing here on screen for our YouTube viewers really complement actually some of the colors that I see in David's photography. Uh, it's a great reflection. I love, David, that shot of the what looks like the desert there with the sky that just comes alive. Yeah, it was a beautiful morning. Um, Where was I, that shot? So that was shot in Snow Canyon State Park. Uh, right in Ivan's, Utah. Um, my wife and I were staying nearby at uh, the Red Mountain Resort. We actually, this was the morning after, we had a 10-year uh, recommitment ceremony that I had set up as, as a surprise for her um, for our 10th wedding anniversary. And the next morning, we were going to be leaving that day, and, and I just got up early. Um, the best light is in either in the early morning as the sun's rising or before the sun rises. Uh, or in the evening, and, and they're used to these intense clouds, and um, so um, it's a beautiful park, beautiful red rocks, and just everything came together um, in, to give it that drama, and that's sort of what I seek in my images, it's either drama or, or mood or what have you. I can pull that out, uh, and if the circumstances are, allow it, the, the, um, the weather, uh, everything comes together. In this shot it did. Now you also live in the area, obviously, I think you're working at RCMS, is it? Myself? Yeah, or where are you working? Actually, I, I live in Oakland. Oh, California. you live in Oakland. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. And, and so you're in Oakland and you work at a medical facility also doing digital imaging. Uh -oh, in, a, we see in a sense, um, ultrasound. So we, we scan patients and look at their arteries, veins, and organs, and um, uh, try to help the doctors diagnose what's going on for them. I so, just had that done yesterday in Santa Rosa, as a matter of fact, at right? St. Joseph's. I went to their vascular center and okay. everything came out okay, which was great. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> but yeah. they, boy, did they do a thorough job. And I was very happy that they took the time to do that. So your skills, you're talented all the, across the board here. Now we seem to have lost Deborah, and I don't know what happened. No. We finally got a good image of her and then she just popped out. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Come back Deborah, because her jewelry really is amazing. She combines some of the other types of beads and and intricate looking gold. I don't know if she has any silver. I wanted to, oh, there she does. Over on the left-hand side of our screen, I'm showing uh, as some of her silver work as well as the gold work that she does. And she's been doing this for 20 years and it's very reflective of our locale here on the coast. Mm -hmm. And this is such a cute little place in Point Arena where they're being exhibited the Coast Highway Art Collective. We give a big shout out to them all the time. We love going up there to their openings and exhibits and they are open Thursday through Sunday, 11 to two at 284 Main Street in Point Arena. And for the whole month of May, uh, again, this exhibit with David Bricks that we're talking with and Deborah Threlkel, I hope she comes back to help me pronounce that name. And uh, so these, these two artists are going to be shown there. And the opening reception is May 1, noon to 5. And you are listening to KGUA in Walala 88.3 FM. We are streaming around the world at kgua.org. And online, you also can find lots of other apps as well as we are live on YouTube again today. It's a great 
new uh, exploration for us in the radio business to be able to have a visual platform. And I actually am a videographer and a video editor. I use Premiere in the long line of Adobe products. Nice. And I too started out in photography when I was about 16 in Aspen, Colorado at Aspen High School doing the black and white photography. Ansel Adams influenced me too, and he influenced you as well. Oh yeah. I, um, in college, I had a, uh, a dark room uh, in my room and in the ba adjoining bathroom that I shared with my my roommate, I, I, at night, I'd kick my roommate out of the bathroom, lock the door, and, and that would be the wet side. And I had a uh, four by five cold light and larger. That sounds like four me. Four by five, yeah. So, I mean, Ansel Adams and Edward Weston and, and all, all the, the greats that came with the black and white and the zone system, that, that was all about that when I was in college. So that's kind of where I started shooting uh, four by five until I bought um, a Nikon and you know, went to uh, um, 35 millimeters. So it's we been have, a long trip. It's been a long trip. It sounds we've got uh, Deborah is back. Yay. Yay. I wanted to mention when you when we talk about Ansel Adams, uh, there's a woman here in the area. She lives in Anchor Bay. Her name is Marion Patterson, a you know, well-known photographer. She actually lived with Ansel Adams and his family. And wow. was part of the crew for a long time. I mean, what an, a history she has. Wow, no doubt. Yep. And so, Deborah, you are now back with us. I, I can see you need to unmute your mic, but at least we've got you. And the video is so much better if you're watching on YouTube out there, all of our <laughs> listeners and <Hi>, viewers. <laughs> and she's going to come back. Let's see if we can get you to unmute that mic, Deborah. She's working on it, I can see. She's really trying, she's got a good camera this time. And I'm gonna ask you to unmute one more time there. Oh, I think you did it. Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. welcome back, Deborah. Oh, I don't know what happened, it just kicked me right out. Yeah, well, you're back. And so let's take this time back to talk. Yeah, now we can really see you. So why don't you give us uh, more information about your jewelry, I was just, saying that I can see you work with both silver and gold and you add beautiful different types of beads. Where do you get your products and, and describe a little bit about your work? So I'm a beach comber and a lot of what I'm working with is abalone and beach glass and I drill the beach glass. I try to use the fragments of abalone as I find them. I don't do a lot of drilling and buffing and grinding. It's toxic, but I also like the forms that are created by the ocean and um, bouncing off the rocks and everything. It just has this really smooth, great feel when you put it in your hand. Some of them almost feel like a coin. So I'm using natural material. I use precious wire, just um, gold is pretty expensive. So usually that's a custom order. And I wire wrap, which means I um, make a chain out of one piece of wire using pliers. And it means that if a part of your necklace does break for some reason, you don't have all your beads cascading all over the floor. It's really a very sturdy piece. And each piece of abalone, you know, I have a lot of beads. I have beads. My mother was a jeweler in New York. Um, she, her name was Roseanne and she sold to people like Meg Tilly and all kinds of people that they knew. Um, wow. And she was a beater as opposed to what I'm doing. She's strung, but she traveled all over the world um, with my stepfather for his work and went to China. They went to Africa, Thailand. And when my mother passed away, I inherited a huge amount of things. Um, and I didn't want to use any of them for a while because it was like, oh, They're your moms. my mom's, <laughs> but you know, what am I going to do with boxes and boxes of stuff? And so it really became an inspiration um, as I've been creating my jewelry to incorporate a lot of the things that I inherited from her. And, and I go to gem shows. I, the pandemic's been really hard. I'm a hands-on person. So trying to buy beads online, yeah. you know, it looks like one thing, but then it comes home and it's never what you think it's going to be. You're not the only one that has said that as an artist and a jeweler. There was another woman I was talking to who said the exact same thing. And so I've had all my vaccinations and there's a show coming up and 
I'm kind of, you know, with a little trepidation, but I'm very excited to be able to go and be back in the world of the living. So yes, I know of, that feeling. Yeah, in the beginning of pandemic, I wasn't really making that much jewelry. I really got into gardening. My garden looks better than ever. I don't know <laughs> if I would have done all this gardening if there hadn't been a pandemic, but, <laughs> but now I, um, especially with, I've had a show in the fall with a high school friend of mine that I re, who is also a jeweler that I reconnected with. And now this wonderful show with um, David's photographs, which like you said, I feel like our work really is complementary to each other. Um, Very complimentary. Like, uh, you get a feeling, you know, this is all the natural world and, um, you know, what we experience in the natural world is a lot of time as artists echoed through our work. And so that's really what I feel when I look at our poster or look at the photographs of our work is that we've experienced these things that we wanna share with other people. And so I'm excited to do this show. Um, it's coming up pretty soon, it's May 1st and David and I'll be there for the opening and I'm pretty sure you'll be there all weekend long, Dave, David? Through Sunday, yeah. Okay, so it's 12 to 5 on Saturday is the opening day, and I also plan on being there Sunday as well for the, I don't know if our hours will be quite as long on Sunday, but um, it's always great to see the community. Ling Yen does an incredible job of Absolutely. Protocol of safety yeah. so that when you're there, you don't feel like you're compromising yourself to be part of the community and you know experience something besides your own home during the pandemic and and <clears throat> to be able to also have the the vaccination i just sort of feel like you know we're getting closer to resuming some sort of normal life again i too feel that as well just this last trip i did to santa rosa to actually do some of the ultrasound imaging for myself, I visited with a friend of mine that our kids met when they were in first grade up in Calpella, up in Ukiah. And uh, now they're 32. And we have missed being around each other and being able to hug. We actually went to a dinner at a restaurant together. We sat outside, but it was so wonderful to be able to do that together, to feel a little bit more normal again. And I wanted to say, Deborah, how much you reflect in what you just said, the previous guests that we had on the show, and that was Arun Patel and Keith Wilson, who also said the same thing about how they, in combining their talents in their production of their work, really reflects the world around us in a natural way, uh, even though you use digital tools to accomplish that effect. Uh, but they, they, it, your artwork really does reflect this coast. I've been coming up here since the mid 80s from the Bay Area. I was living in San Francisco in Mill Valley and I would uh, go abalone diving and enjoyed the heck out of it. And I could see as I moved up here, eventually to the coast, a lot of people decorate around their homes with abalone in one form or another because, but, and the population of course is coming back, but it's, you know, as far as abalone diving, they've had to curtail, curtail that. But the, 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 the shells are so iridescent and beautiful. And like you said, they have that smooth feel to them. And it's rep represented in the beautiful artwork that we've got here on screen that we're sharing with our YouTube audience. And uh, I just want to remind everybody again that they're listening to David Bricks and Deborah. And Deborah, please pronounce your last name for me. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> it's um, Threlkel. It's Threlkel. Okay. Threlkel. Break yeah. it down. Norwegian. <laughs> Norwegian. <laughs> How far back? Uh, so oh, Norwegian. Well, it's, um, it's my married name. Um, okay. I'm a Woods. Woods is my maiden name. And I've been um, doing the DNA and able to go back to like, you know, 700 AD. So I thought that that was pretty interesting. I always thought I was Scottish, but I'm mostly French. So I, um, kind of interesting when you, I, you know, I think we just kind of like doing those too. Forget, but, um, I'm related to Robert the Bruce and some other guys who were fighters. And I, 
Oh, he says, it's pretty interesting. I'm now spending more time on the grandmas, looking at who the grandmothers were. And, you know, in DNA, they kind of, you're following your grandfathers more because that's where most of the information is. But the grandmothers are pretty interesting too. So I've really been enjoying that a lot. Now, when you are both there at the Coast Highway Art Collective on the opening May 1st and both May 1st and 2nd, correct? Yes. So uh, describe what people can expect when they walk into this unique little place in Point Arena. Okay, well, David's maybe been a couple of times, but I used to co-manage the gallery with Ling Yen, so I- Oh, you did. Yeah, and it's going through, it's always going through transition, and that's what I really love is that it just keeps improving. And, and the protocol is that there's a tent outside. Um, there's only a certain amount of people allowed in at the same time. You, there's sanitation, you know, you have to wear your mask, but they also ask that, you know, you can make sure your hands are sanitized. And um, then there's a collective of artists, local artists, and there's beautiful works, pottery, um, basket weaving, painting, jewelry. And in the center is the, the gallery where the exhibition is. So the walls will be filled with David's beautiful works. And I think he's bringing some other items, um, some smaller photographs and some magnets and things. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the area, I'll have my cases. Um, great time in May too, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. And oh, that's right. Who, who wouldn't want to give a wonderful gift from the Coast Highway Art Collective to your beloved mom, sister, wife, you know, person that you care about um, is a gift of art. We have a lot of great galleries here in Guadalajara. But I'm, you know, I've got a special spot, of course, for the Coast Highway Art Collective. I love Ling Yen and, and the work she's done to really keep the community together. I, you know, especially during the heart of pandemic where it was just like your home and you don't leave, <laughs> to be able to know that you're safe when you go there and see um, people still, you know, trying to have a life. And, and I think she's done like a really outstanding job. I'm pretty excited about this show. I've She's made a little a lot energetic. Of, What's that? I said I've made a lot of new pieces, so I'm I'm pretty excited about this our upcoming show with David. Yes, Ling Yin is a little energetic powerhouse. And she's also a fabulous jeweler. I love her jewelry as well. And I've bought a couple of pieces from her. Um, don't have them on today. I have actually some of Walt Rush's jewelry on. He's another local jeweler. Another great guy and buddy. I know. I have. And this one is actually the, this, this is the sea urchin type look that he does. And then a couple of his bracelets. But what were you saying, Deborah? Well, I, we have a lot of wonderful artists and I have jewelry. You'd think I'd have enough jewelry with making jewelry, but I have jewelry from Ling Yen and Walt Rush. And we're really lucky to have so many talented people in our community. I, and like you said, so many wonderful galleries all up and down our coast from Linden Design Gallery in the Sea Ranch to Wallala Art Center in Wallala, the, the Dolphin, Dolphin Gallery. I'm in the Dolphin too. I have work in the Dolphin, yes. Well, we have just a couple more minutes here before we have to transition out. Uh, any last words that you would both like to say? Go ahead, Dave. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is sort of one of my initial showings. So this is my my maiden uh, exhibit. And uh, come on out, take a look at my work. Um, uh, come and meet me. Um, ask me questions. I'm really looking forward to um, getting out there. I've created pieces uh, of a number of price points. So, you know, there are framed images, there's matted images, and you can even- Magnets. Yeah. I magnets like the magnets. They were, they were, they turned out really beautifully. Um, and I look forward to meeting everybody and, and having a great day on Saturday and, and uh, definitely part of the day on Sunday. And uh, Deborah, I look forward to meeting you in person. Um, so you know, I'm just thrilled to be there and, and thrilled to um, go public, as it were, with my work. So, Well, that is amazing, David. This is your maiden voyage out there in the art world. And you have been doing photography for a long, long time. Long time. Long time. And it's really beautiful. I love that, again, that one of Crater Lake. 
that image with the Milky Way behind it and that one of the desert. I'm sure you've got a lot more there in the exhibit, but these are the photographs that we were given. <laughs> mm -hmm. And also Deborah, thank you for joining us today. Love your abalone work. You are the abalone queen jewelry woman and everybody can go see all your new artwork that you've created for the Coast Highway Art Collective opening that again, audience is May 1st and May 2nd, noon 1st. Actually, on the 1st, it's noon to 5. Do you know what the hours are on Sunday? Would it go back to the 11 to 2? I think it's yeah. 11 to 2, though. If we have people, we never kick anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy that you came out to see us. You know, come by, say hi. Um, Absolutely. Shop local or just come and absorb all the beautiful work. Uh, it'll make you feel great. And that's at 284 Main Street in Point Arena, translucence and imagery, jewelry and photography. Thank you both for joining us today here on Peggy's Place in Wallala. I'm Leanne Lindsay. Just thank you both again for joining us. Oh, thank you so thank much, Leanne. And see you soon, David. Yep, you bet. Thanks, Leanne. All right, you're welcome. Bye. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And goodbye to all of our YouTube watchers out there and everyone.